Well, tonight, Biden is defending his apparent attack on the Supreme Court during the State of the Union address. Oh, look, I think they made a wrong decision. I think they read the Constitution wrong. I think they made a mistake. And I was being blunt. And the part of it that they said, remember, what they said was, it's up to the states to decide. That's really what, the, 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 what was said. It's no longer a constitutionally guaranteed principle. And they used the phrase that women can vote and they can change if they want to. I found that somewhat insulting, the idea that they don't think they can. Women are speaking out. They spoke out in 2022. They spoke out in 2024, 2020. This is what's going to happen. And I was just making it clear. Women speak up. This is going to change. And if you give me some, if you give me a Congress that's Democrat, we're going to change it back to Roe v. Wade. But Republicans are calling the attack disgusting and outrageous. Here's Congressman Byron Donalds earlier on Sunday Morning Futures. I found his scolding of the court disgusting because the left will say that they want to respect the institution except when they don't get their way. And then when they don't get their way, they want to call out Supreme Court justices in front of the world. That was outrageous. There was a reason why not the entire the entire Supreme Court was not there, because I think they understood they didn't want to be subjected to Joe Biden's foolishness. Okay, and that was quite a moment uh, during the State of the Union address when he spoke directly to the Supreme Court. Um, Nicole, I want to ask you first on this. It seemed like the president, he took the words of the Supreme Court in the Roe versus Wade opinion and turned it right back on the Supreme Court during that speech. And he said he found it insulting to women. Um, but what about other women who vote, maybe will vote a different way or have different thoughts on abortion? Is he putting all women into one box? And is that insulting? Well, he certainly has a way with words, and this isn't the first time that he's really generalized large populations. I mean, remember the radio uh, interview a few years ago when he's like, if you don't know if you're voting for me or Trump, you ain't black? <laughs> Like, this is the equivalent, yeah. but for women. Like, obviously, you have to be for me if you're a woman, because everyone has to be for me. But you know what? I'll tell you, uh, Joe Biden has a problem, because that recent New York Times poll, the women were split, 46 to 46. So all of a sudden, you have seen Trump's support amongst women has gone up. In 2016, against Clinton, he was 39 to her 54. In 2020, he was 44 to Biden 55. But now they're neck and neck. And the only reason that the Republicans will lose this vote is if the Republicans can't get out of their own way on this issue, because poll after poll after poll, America has spoken. Americans are, do not support extremism when it comes to reproductive rights. And so Republicans really have to look closely at what they're doing in terms of like IVF and some of these more extreme laws, um, because I think that could potentially hurt Republicans. Yeah, no question. Guy, I want to get you real quick on what you thought about the president defending his attack on the Supreme Court, and you heard Byron Donalds, what he said. He said it was outrageous and disgusting. What do you think? Well, he's using it to motivate his political base. Of course, we saw agitators in the hard left showing up at the homes of the justices over and over again, and Biden was basically mum on that, which I think is pretty disgraceful. But if we go back and play the clip again, and I'll just remind people of what the president said there in that MSNBC interview, he said that if you give me a Democratic Congress, we'll, quote, change it back to Roe versus Wade. That is not true. Right. If you look at the bill that the Democrats have supported and that he himself has supported, it is, speaking of radicalism or extremism, very, very extreme in the other direction. Right, it's nine-month abortion on demand. So Republicans, I agree, need to be a lot better on substance and on rhetoric when it comes to this issue. Democrats are going to try to exploit it again this cycle. But part of that has to be highlighting the actual position of Joe Biden and his party as opposed to the one that he's pretending that it is for political reasons. Yeah. Well, abortion is uh, certainly going to be a big issue uh, in this election cycle. But the other big issue is the border and uh, all of the problems there. Uh, a lot of people accusing uh, President Biden of being very soft on the border. But I want to play a clip right now of something he said back in 1989, folks. Listen to this. Joe Biden, me, I would settle for a world in which I could worry about the same kinds of things that my parents worried about in which I only had to worry about the grades my children got in school rather than the drugs they're being exposed to, in which I only had to worry about the prices my wife had to pay at the supermarket instead of fearing that she might get mugged by a junkie in the parking lot as she loads her groceries into the car, in which tonight I could call my mom 
just to wish her pleasant dreams, not for the purpose of making sure she's safe in her own home. That's the kind of world I want. That's the kind of world you deserve. And there's no reason we can't have it. Okay, so that was then Senator Biden giving the Democratic response to uh, a speech by George H.W. Bush when he was president. He was talking about drugs. That was Biden's response. But uh, he has uh, quite a different take today. And, Tom, I want to come to you on, on this uh, topic. But first, I want to play a clip uh, from a well-known comedian who, uh, who pokes some fun at Biden on this issue. Let's take a listen to this. I started with Biden because the border's all the rage now. Everything's crazy for the border. Mm -hmm. So I did Biden three years ago, and he's at a press conference. You know, Mr. President, uh, do you have any idea how you're going to handle the crisis at the border? And Biden's like, first of all, let's get our facts straight. There's no crisis at the border. Come on. And he goes, how do you know, sir? He goes, because it says so on the piece of paper. Come on. He says on the paper. <laughs> So there's a paper right there. And then recently, everyone wants to close the border. Everyone's screaming. Biden's up there. I'll close the border harder than anyone's ever closed the border. I know how to close border. Come on, Jack. And the press is like, but last time, get your facts straight. I'll beat you the hell out of you. Will you dog pace pony's shoulder? Come on. Let's do some push-ups. I'll close the border like nobody's ever closed it. The border, the border patrol, the border, border can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> That's a good ending. <laughs> All right, that's, that's Dana Carvey, of course. Uh, we all love him. Uh, he does a very funny Biden. And Tom, you're a comedian as well, and I know you do a deadpan Biden. Do, do audiences take, <laughs> there you go. You gotta get the squint, that's all. You start with the squint and then it, it just follows from there. Well, I knew what he, Dana Carvey was yeah. doing. This is how you do Biden. You just start rambling and you'll come upon, you know, you, you'll find something if you just ramble long enough. I like him working for his audience of one. He's trying to make his co-host laugh, that's great. But yeah, Biden, uh, it's interesting. He's, you know, he's not even real. L look at him from the, the 70s, or that was yeah, the 80s, that was right? The 89. Yeah, mm -hmm. had a, it had a 70s look to it. But the, th he was a completely different person. Mm. The Democratic Party was a completely different party. This guy has been in politics just, he has just been talking for decades and decades. He doesn't even know what he's saying at this point. But you know, it doesn't matter because he's never been consistent. He's done whatever he, you know, is going to get him elected. And, uh, you know, he doesn't believe in anything. He doesn't believe in the separation of powers. We just saw that speech that he's, he's basically threatening the uh, justices of the Supreme Court. And he's saying we're going to turn it back to Roe. You can't turn it back yeah. to Roe. Roe was a judicial decision. This is legislation. And they said, no, we're going to turn it back to the legislators. If you want to create legislation that makes abortion legal, you go ahead and do that. And then he says, oh, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to turn it back to Roe. He didn't even know what the decision is. Yeah, well, and he had quite a difference of opinion back in 1989, like you said.